Good morning. Uh, welcome to you all to our service this morning. A uh, special welcome to any visitors and to those who are joining us online. There are a few intimations on the back of the service sheet. Uh, reminder about the food bank. Uh, we're always grateful for items that can be handed in at the church any Sunday. Also, you're invited to make use of the prayer cards, which are available in the vestibule, and to return them to the box provided. And there will be a meeting of the Kirk session on Thursday evening at 7.30 in the church. Let us worship God. Let us sing the hymn number 72, hymn 72, O God of Bethel. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, we thank you for providing for all our needs, for leading us day by day, for watching over us and bringing us in safety to your house this morning. We come now to worship you, to make our vows and bring our prayers before your throne of grace to offer you the praise of our lips, the adoration of our hearts, and the service of our lives. Lord God, we confess that we have not loved or served you as we ought. We have often ignored your voice and gone our own self-centered way in life. We have doubted your wisdom and broken your commands. 
we have sinned against you and against other people. Merciful God, forgive us for the wrong we have done and the good we have failed to do. Forgive us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us on the cross. As we turn from our sins, assure us that we are forgiven. Help us by your Spirit to obey your commands and to follow in the way that Jesus has shown us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for calling us to be your people through faith in Christ. Help us this morning to dedicate our lives anew to you. Give us wisdom to know your will and strength to do it. Keep us faithful to you all the days of our life on earth and then bring us by your grace to your home in heaven. For we ask it in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, boys and girls, have you been into air? I'm sure you've all been into air, haven't you? Yes, okay. So what do you have to cross to get into the centre of air? Yes? A sign? Well, I didn't think of that. That's right, I'm sure you do. Anything else you might have to cross to get into the centre of air? A bridge, yes. And what does the bridge go across? Water, yes, the river. Okay, that's right. Now, it's easy to cross a river if there's a bridge. But how could you cross a river if there was no bridge yes by oh now there's a thought by aeroplane yeah okay you could do anything else you could do yeah by a, boat. a boat if you had a boat yes or uh, maybe you could swim or you could wade if it wasn't too deep yeah now in the early times of the bible there were no bridges and so when God's people, the Israelites, came to the river Jordan, they wondered how they'd get across. They didn't have any boats. They certainly didn't have any airplanes. And the river was so deep and wide and fast flowing, they couldn't wade across or even swim across. It was too dangerous. So what could they do? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you, yes, they had to wait till it went down. That's right, but how would it go down? Well, God told them to do a strange thing. He told them to take something called the Ark of the Covenant. That was like a big box which they used in worship. And they were to stand with it on the edge of the river. And when they did that, the water stopped flowing. The riverbed became dry and they crossed over into the promised land of Canaan. And you know, that was a miracle that God dried up the river and made a way for the people to cross over. But God also tells us in the Bible that he wants us to cross over into a new life, just like the Israelites were crossing over into a new land, into a better life. Instead of a life of being greedy and selfish and disobedient and unkind, God wants us to cross over into a life of being loving and kind and thoughtful and obedient. And God has made that possible for us by a miracle, the miracle of Jesus, who died for us on the cross 
and rose again. And God wants us to believe in him, to trust and follow him. And then we can cross over to a new and better life with him. And we're going to sing from Mission Praise number 52. God sent his son, they called him Jesus. Testament reading is from the book of Joshua, Joshua chapter 3, verses 1 to 17. It's about crossing the Jordan. Early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites set out from Shittim and went to the Jordan, where they camped before crossing over. After three days, the officers went throughout the camp, giving orders to the people. When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the priests who are Levites 
carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and follow it. Then you will know which way to go, since you have never been this way before. But keep a distance of about a thousand yards between you and the ark. Do not go near it. Joshua told the people, consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Joshua said to the priests, take up the ark of the covenant and pass on ahead of the people. So they took it up and went ahead of them. And the Lord said to Joshua, today I will begin to exalt you in the eyes of all Israel so that they may know that I am with you as I was with Moses. Tell the priests who carry the Ark of the Covenant, when you reach the edge of the Jordan's waters, go and stand in the river. Joshua said to the Israelites, come here and listen to the words of the Lord your God. This is how you will know that the living God is among you, and that he will certainly drive out before you the Canaanites, Hittites, Hevites, Perizzites, Girgashites, Amorites, and Jebusites. See, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth will go into the Jordan ahead of you. Now then, choose 12 men from the tribes of Israel, one from each tribe. And as soon as the priests who carry the ark of the Lord the Lord of all the earth set foot in the Jordan. Its waters flowing downstream will be cut off and stand up in a heap. So when the people broke camp to cross the Jordan, the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. Now the Jordan is in flood all during harvest. Yet as soon as the priests who carried the Ark reached the Jordan and their feet touched the water's edge, the water from upstream stopped flowing. It piled up in a heap a great distance away at a town called Adam in the vicinity of Zarathan, while the water flowing down to the Sea of the Arabah, the Salt Sea, was completely cut off. So the people crossed over opposite Jericho. The priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the middle of the Jordan while all Israel passed by until the whole nation had completed the crossing on dry ground. Amen. Now the choir will sing the anthem, I will sing of the Lord. Thank you.
The New Testament reading is from the Gospel of John, John chapter 14, verses 1 to 6. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Amen. May God bless us these readings from his word and to his name be the praise and the glory. Now we sing him 536, in 536, there is a land of pure delight. You have not been this way before. There are many situations in which someone might say to us, you have not been this way before. Maybe that we've moved to a new home or a new job and we've not been that way before. 
Maybe that we've taken on new responsibilities at home or at work, in the church or the community, and we've not been that way before. Maybe that we've lost our job or lost someone that we love deeply. And we find ourselves in a situation we've not been in before. And in this COVID pandemic, we have not been this way before and we're having to learn to live with the dangers and the restrictions. And as a congregation, in a prolonged vacancy and facing an uncertain future. We have not been this way before. And in all these situations where we have not been this way before, we can feel a range of emotions. We can be apprehensive anxious about the future, about what will happen and how we will cope. We can be depressed, even despairing about our situation. We can look back longingly and wish we could turn the clock back. Or we can accept that the situation has changed we can't go back, we have to go forward. We can make the best of the situation and look to God to show us the way, to go with us, to help us and guide us. In the Old Testament, Joshua said to the people of Israel, you have not been this way before. The people were camped on the bank of the River Jordan, about to cross over into the Promised Land. And they had not been this way before. It was new to them. They'd spent 40 years wandering in the wilderness after a previous generation had spurned the opportunity to cross into the Promised Land. Moses had sent out spies into the promised land. They'd reported it was a good land, a land flowing with milk and honey, but the land was occupied by giants who live in walled cities, and the people were afraid of them. They turned back, and they, that generation, they wandered and perished in the wilderness. But now the Israelites were having to face up to their fears. They had not been this way before, and they knew that the way before them wouldn't be easy. They'd have to fight to gain possession of the land, and they'd have to do so without Moses, their longtime leader who had died. And so Joshua, their new leader, gave them instructions about going the way they had not been before, instructions that we can take about going the way we have not been before. Joshua said, first of all, look to God. Times may have changed, leaders may have changed, but God has not changed. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God revealed himself to Moses as the faithful God, keeping his covenant of love with generation after generation of those who love him and keep his commandments. And we can look to God knowing that he is the faithful God who will keep his covenant of love, his promise to us to be with us, to guide us and help us 
as he has done for his people in the past. Joshua told the Israelites to look to the ark, the ark of the covenant, which symbolized the presence of God among them. The ark was a big box covered in gold that contained, among other things, the the tablets of stone in which were written the Ten Commandments. And the priests had carried the ark through the wilderness with the people, and now they would carry it through the Jordan to the promised land. We look not to the Ark of the Covenant, but to Jesus Christ. The New Testament calls him the mediator of the new covenant. And he assures us of God's love and God's presence with us. And so we are encouraged to run the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. He has been this way before us. He knows the way, and he will lead and guide those who trust and follow him. God wants us to look to him and to follow where he leads us. Joshua told the Israelites, when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priests carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and follow it. Then you will know which way to go since you have never been this way before. Jesus calls us to follow him, to follow his teachings, his example, his trust in God. He may lead us in ways we have not been before. We may not understand why he is leading us those ways. But if we trust and follow him, we will find out that his way is good that it's the only way to reach the destination he has planned for us. Joshua told the Israelites to follow the ark. But he said, but keep a distance of about a thousand yards between you and the ark. Do not go near it. I think there were two reasons for that. First of all, he wanted everyone to be able to see the ark gleaming in the sunshine, everyone in this large crowd of people. For God wants us to know and follow him personally, not just to follow the crowd. And the second reason for the distance is that there is a distance between us and God. We need to recognize that God is holy. We should reverence and respect him realize that we are sinful people and we can't approach God until the stain of our sin has been removed. And that explains Joshua's next instruction. He said to the people, consecrate yourselves, dedicate yourselves, commit yourself to God to go his way, whatever way he leads you. We need to leave behind the wrong attitudes that keep us from following God and going his way. We need to confess our sins and ask his forgiveness and his help sometimes to put the past behind us. We believe that Jesus died to forgive the sins of the past and he rose again to lead us into a new life. Joshua called on the Israelites to leave the past behind them and look forward to this new life in the, in the promised land. Joshua said, Consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. 
Paul says in the New Testament that God is able to do far more than all we ever ask or think according to his power at work in us. God is able to do amazing things today as he has done among his people in the past if we will believe and consecrate ourselves to him. The amazing thing that God was going to do for the Israelites was to part the waters of the Jordan so that they could cross over on dry land. And it was amazing because the Jordan was in in flood. It would seem that anyone who, who stepped into the river would be swept away and drowned. There seemed no way to get across. But Joshua told the people to remember the amazing thing that God had done before in the time of Moses when he parted the Red Sea and the people were able to cross over on dry land. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I will begin to exalt you in the eyes of all Israel so that they may know that I am with you as I was with Moses. Tell the priests who carry the Ark of the Covenant, when you reach the edge of the Jordan's waters, go and stand in the river. What was going to happen? Would the priests in the Ark be swept away? Or would they just get their feet wet and look foolish because nothing happened? Sometimes we fear that If we obey God, we'll look foolish. But God never leaves us looking foolish if we trust and obey him. He will open up the way ahead. God wants us to trust him. He wants us to take a step of faith. That's what the priests did. They stepped into the river and God acted. The water stopped. We're told it, the water from upstream stopped flowing. It piled up in a heap a great distance away. We don't know exactly what happened. Perhaps there was a landslide, but certainly it was an act of God. The river became dry just at the time when the Israelites were waiting to cross. And if we step out in faith, God will act and open up the way before us. God will open the way and God will lead us in the way. The priests carried the ark into the river and the people followed them. God doesn't want us to get ahead of him and act precipitately. But when we see God move, we must move and not remain where we are. So we should be continually looking to God, ready and willing to move, following him. The priests took the ark and they moved into the middle of the Jordan And they stopped there until everyone had completed the crossing. Why did they stop? Well, again, perhaps God wanted to assure the people that he was always in the midst of them. Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there. He said to his disciples, I am with you always to the close of the age. And whatever our circumstances or our situation He is with those who trust and follow him. Perhaps also he was thinking of the people at the back of the line. Assure them that he was still taking care of them. The ark stayed where it was until everyone had crossed. And then the waters returned. God leads us. He stays with us. He brings us through the obstacles and difficulties. If we trust and follow him, he will bring us a way we have not been before. 
to a place we have not been before. It may be an unfamiliar place, it may be a strange place, but it will be a good place because God will be with us. The land of Canaan was unfamiliar to the Israelites. It was different from the land of Egypt where they'd been slaves. It was different from the wilderness where they'd wandered for 40 years. The land of Canaan was an agricultural land and they would have to learn to grow crops instead of depending on the manna in the wilderness. The land of Canaan was an inhabited land. It was inhabited by tribes whom they'd have to overcome to gain possession of the land. But Joshua had said to them, Listen to the words of the Lord your God. Know that the living God is among you and that he will certainly drive out before you the Canaanites, Hittites, Hevites, Perizzites, and, and so on. And in this new and unfamiliar place in which we find ourselves, we may need to learn new skills. We may need to overcome opposition. But God wants us to listen to him and know that he is among us and that he will act to enable us to gain possession of the land that he has promised us. If we trust in God and follow his leading, he will bring us through our current difficulties to the place he has prepared for us in this world. If we trust in God and follow his leading, he will bring us through all the troubles of life to the place he has prepared for us in heaven. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God Trust also in me. In my father's house are many rooms. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. Jesus Christ passed through the waters of death to prepare a place for us so that when we pass that way, we need not be afraid. We will not have been that way before. But Jesus has, and he is with us, and he will bring us safely to God's promised land in heaven. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. However unfamiliar or difficult our situation, if we trust and follow him, we will see the way, we will know the truth, we will enjoy life with him for all eternity. Amen. Now we sing that great hymn, hymn number 89, Guide me, O thou great Jehovah.
Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for all your love and goodness to us, for health and strength and all our powers of body and of mind, for food and clothes and every material gift you have given us. We thank you for the care of those who love us, for strength and hope in the trials and difficulties of life, for the gospel of our risen Lord, and for his presence with us through the Holy Spirit. Loving God, we pray for all who are ill. Ease their pain, calm their restlessness, help them to trust in you and know that they are always in your keeping. Bless all who care for them, Give them your help and strength, and may their love and tireless patience bring your grace and comfort to those who suffer. Merciful God, we pray for all who are in need, those for whom life is a bitter struggle, those whose lives are clouded by death or loss, by pain or disability, by unemployment or rejection, by discouragement or fear. Assure them of your loving care. Help them to trust in you and find peace and hope and courage. Lord God, we pray for your church. Enable us and all your people around the world to walk with Christ in our daily lives and to work for the coming of his kingdom. Strengthen the witness of the church in this parish and in every place that people may come to know Christ and find new life in him. Guide those who make decisions in the church that they may know your will and fulfill your purposes. Accept our gifts of money and use them for the work of your church and the glory of your name. Almighty God, we pray for the nations of the world. Bring an end to war and strife. Break down the barriers of race and greed that all may live together in peace and care for one another. Heavenly Father, we pray for our own country. Bless our Queen and give wisdom to those in government. Uphold all who serve our nation, doctors, nurses, ambulance, fire, police, teachers, social workers, shop assistants, refuse collectors, and so many more on whom we depend day by day. Keep them well and keep us grateful for their service. Eternal God, we thank you for all the way you have led us and helped us through the troubles and difficulties of life. Help us to look to you and to trust you for the future, knowing that you will never leave us, believing that you will bring us one day through faith in Christ to your home in heaven. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 484, hymn 484, Courage, Brother, Do Not Stumble.
grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all this day and forevermore.